Well, I'm, I'm here to try to, since the, the, the short time frame we have, um, to, to try to do a sort of exercise I would like to go through with you. Um, an exercise to point towards a, a false, uh, what I call a fa false point of departure and think in the relation of bodies and circulation. Um, because there is an assumption of Western thought that seems to have uh, established itself quite persistently and that lays a common ground for what is being perceived in Western discourse as a uh, binary opposition of you know, an extremely uh, racist, openly racist, xenophobic and genocidal position um, and its alleged counterpart, which is a, a, a liberal discourse on open borders, let's say. Um, you know, here in the US, it's also a particular uh, uh, important topic since we see that the border politics are causing severe humanitarian crises and injustice. So we are driven by these reactionary forces, as is the actual uh, US government, to, to see um, the only opposition, possible opposition to these genocidal, racist, xenophobic uh, position as a liberal discourse, whereas um, like uh, kind of left from liberals being entirely left out, right? And this fiction, this binary, I would like to, to address by pointing at what is the false, what I call false point of departure, uh, which is the assumption uh, of the uh, subject as a human individual and thus um, as the human body, as a, a closed-off autonomous individual organism. So the question would be like, how can we think of bodies and circulation together without falling into this dominant trap or, or the, let's call it, dominant rhetoric of Western discourse? An alternative would be um, if, we, if we consider circulation not departing from the human body like as the body that circulates, right? The individual body that circulates, but reconsider our notion of the human body itself departing from circulation. Uh, paraphrasing the Brazilian geographer Milton Santos, we could think like not the human body is in circulation, but um, circulation is in the human body. So without circulation, there is no body and there's no life. Um, we could think thus, uh, think the human body as a plurality of vital elements that unified, they configure the human and its vital functions. From the perspective of uh, circulation then, the human body is a configuration of virtually infinite multiplicity of simultaneous molecular movements, right? Transactions, energetic exchange, rhythmic overlap of cyclical temporalities that necessarily all of these vital functions, um, they extend perpetually and necessarily the limits of the skin. Um, one could say the body is configured by the compound and interrelation of its vital elements and its vital functions. So in Western tradition, this somehow uh, leads to establish the, the skin as central element, as, as boundary, which defines the human individual. This is the core of the problem. Biologically, the skin is considered to be the largest of human organs, at least it has been for a long time. Uh, Kenya Lason has pointed uh, to me that there's actually uh, new research on larger human organs, but let's, let's stick to the, to, the <laughs> to the skin as largest of uh, human organs. Uh, it serves many functions, amongst them existential ones to the humo, uh, human uh, organism, individual organism. It serves the regulation of temperature, it works as a protection for other organs, as cushion against different forms of radiation, and it's crucial for the exchange of organic matter, both assimilation and expulsion. Uh, also, the skin is uh, one of the most vital organs uh, of perception and communication, and such it follows a strictly social function. Let's not forget that uh, the skin is also the largest sexual organ we have, right? So in so-called Western societies, the skin, though, has uh, in its tradition, uh, it what, what makes it different to other societies, which uh, uh, in a lot of cases, like uh, the South American ones in, in Bolivia or in, in Brazil and the Amazon, many cultures actually do, do lack the notion of I, right? Of, of the individual I in first person. So, um, and what is different in Western societies, which are structured by individualism, uh, is um, the status of a, a 
economic, juridical and political proportions of, of the skin. So let's not forget uh, that the individual is a Western invention. And as an invention, it was established by the skin in its uh, the institution of the skin as a double difference. This is crucial to understand. The skin works as a double difference. Uh, so first, it is the frontier between the inside and the outside of the body as it is conceived. And second, it is uh, the difference between the self and the other, which includes the me and you or I and we. So establishing the skin as double difference um, does not at all have the, uh, uh, this is crucial to understand, not at all have the function to separate entirely the inside from the outside. Uh, rather, it is there to conceptually and politically separate it, right? As we have, um, so the, the, the vital functions of the skin lies in its permeability, right? And, uh, and its trans, uh, uh, transmissibility. I've uh, pointed out that before. So closing off inside and outside would lead to the immediate death of of the organism uh, instead, or on the contrary of, of the death, what, uh, 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 let's say, the, the Western politics that defines the individual and makes it, constitutes it as productive, um, is there to, to exactly control the permeability of it. So it is there, the, um, the double difference uh, is a governing principle that is there to regulate populations by controlling supervising, administering, and taxing everything that goes inside and outside of the body. So we could sum up saying that there's a systemic effort of modernity uh, that stems obviously out of Western tradition to be able to detect, control, administer material, semiotic, spiritual, energetic, magic, and desiring flows that go through all the bodies all the time and necessarily so. We can, if we try to keep on this exercise, we can think of, of like the, the, the big uh, um, settings of uh, major moral codes that constitute the history and shape modern subjectivity, um, which are all about things that go in and out of the body, right? So be it food or, or sex or health in a, in a larger uh, uh, sense, uh, all the do's and don'ts of, of Judaism, Christianity, Islam, more recently, liberalism or psychoanalysis, they all have to do with the do's and don'ts of what goes in and out of the body, right? So um, regarding the double difference, again, and its implications on all levels of the juridical, economical, and political, it's hard not to understand that Western society is, uh, its order of things is mediated and structured by the institution of the skin as a double difference. So, um, now let's think how to, how to avoid this, this trap, right, of naturalizing it and taking it as a given. Um, I propose uh, uh, the following, that we think of what our body actually consists of, right? As I had said before, um, the body is the plurality of vital elements that configure the human and its vital functions, and so it's configured by the compound of interrelations of vital elements and vital functions, which is a, a constant exceeding of the skin, right, in both ways. So um, let's think, for example, that our body, the human individual body, uh, is constituted by two-thirds of water, more or less, two-thirds, which is the absolute majority, right? Um, this water has to be in a constant exchange. It cannot stand still inside of the body, like in a, in a cup or something. It, uh, it rots, right? Uh, water in a cup rots, and uh, it needs, in the body, it needs constant refill and expulsion. Otherwise, the organism dies, right? If we don't constantly exchange the two-thirds of our body, which physically, materially is our body, then we die. We die in within a few days. It's very, very fast, right? That's the same thing with uh, other vital elements to the human organism, as is glucose or oxygen. You cut off oxygen, you die much faster, right? Glucose, same thing. Um, water is probably what keeps us alive most of the time while we are deprived of it. Still, we need a constant flux. So our body, what we uh, perceive as body, is actually a constant flux. 
um, all these elements, uh, glucose, oxygen, water, are de facto, they have a physical extension, right? So they literally form existential parts of our body that are in constant movement, right? And which is, uh, uh, um, if they are not exchanged in, in short periodic intervals, um, we're dead. So more than that, it's interesting to understand that the largest part of my body is at the same time part of a different circ circulation, a dif different circuit. It's not only part of the circulation of my body, like metabolic circulation, it also two thirds of my body form at the same time part of a larger circle uh, circulation of the, the, the natural water cycle. Right, so two, th two, part, uh, two thirds of my body are at the same time part of you know, what flows through the river, goes into the ocean, uh, evaporates, goes into clouds, then migrates as cloud, rains down on a mountain top, goes into the groundwater, comes up as a spring, uh, uh, again into some river, then it gets taken out by Coca-Cola, by like in plastic bottles into supermarket, I drink it, I expulse it, goes into the river, and so on, right? So um, this, at the same time, two thirds of me are not only mine, but are part of something else. This is only the two thirds of, of water we're talking about. So this also leads us to understand that two thirds of mine were actually like two days ago, we're probably floating on the River Seine in Paris or on the, in front of the coast of, of Cameroons, or it was uh, uh, raining down on the Amazonian rainforest in Brazil, right? So the absolute largest part of me. Um, so from, from the perspective of the, of the natural water cycle, two-thirds of me, the absolute majority of me, are at the same time always outside of me, right? Not inside, it's outside of me. Um, okay, alarmingly, I think I, I'm kind of <laughs> getting to the... So th this is just the, the, um, the easiest, I think, example. It's more complicated to think of what is part of me when we think of oxygen, um, uh, uh, help could be, you know, to think of the photosynthesis of or uh, process of plants. Um, uh, much more complicated when we think of glucose and how historically the consumption of sugar was constructed to keep up uh, uh, the growing industrial working class and how sugar was produced, right? This again brings in the whole story of the forced uh, uh, African diaspora and um, the whole sugarcane plantation history and this huge uh, uh, complex, right? Um, so, so we have to think like the parts that constitute as elemental um, parts of, of my body, vital parts of my body, they do migrate. My body does not limit itself to the skin. Rather, we have to understand our skins uh, as the organism or the institution that mediates our uh, productive configuration. This is what I would like to give us as a, as, a, as a chance to think what, what, what does it uh, mean anyway to close the border. Obviously, as we see, uh, ironically, uh, dramatically, all the, the, the dying and ending bodies on, on the water in the Mediterranean, for example, um, um, they show us that closed borders are, are, are like, uh, politically, a closed border is murder, right? Because at the moment when uh, people in order to fulfill their, their vital functions, need to migrate after what has been taken from them, um, they, they uh, encounter borders, right? So actually the problem is not the closed border, the problem is the predatory uh, capitalist extractivist politics and the exploitation of warfare um, that makes life impossible and it makes the vital functions, the compound, the interrelation of vital functions and vital elements to, to work in a way that it actually produces and secures life of the individual organism. Obviously, once you lack two thirds of your body, you need to go, like your, your vital compound needs to go after those two thirds, and where best would it be to go then to the doorstep of the one who stole it from you? Right. Um, so this, this is basically the, the small exercise I, I wanted to give to you and, and just pass on and later we, we talk. <laughs>